For the last part of this lecture, we perform operations on vector-valued functions. Since these functions take on vector values, we may perform vector operations on them. Suppose capital F and capital Z then are vector functions, and small f is a real-valued function. We will also call f a scalar function. Now the sum of capital F and capital Z is defined naturally enough. The sum of f and g, which we denote by capital F plus capital Z, is defined to be the function whose value at t is the sum of the values of f and g at t. The difference is similarly defined. And so are the dot product and the cross product of these two vector value functions. Note that the sum, difference, and cross product of two vector functions is also a vector valued function because the sum, difference, and cross product of two vectors is also a vector. Meanwhile, the dot product of two vector functions is a real valued function because the dot product of two vectors is a scalar. Now, the scalar product of small f and big F is defined to be the function whose value at t is the product of the vector capital F of t and the scalar small f of t. We may also take the composition of a vector valued function with a scalar function. We define the composition big F circle small f to be the function whose value at t is the value of big F at small f f of t. For instance, consider the function capital the vector functions capital F and capital G as given and the scalar function small f of t here. We are asked to find the difference and the cross product of f and g and the composition of big F and small f. Well the difference of f and g is obtained by just taking the difference of these two vectors, and this is done component-wise. t plus 1 minus t minus 1 is 2. t squared minus 1 minus 1 is t squared minus 2. And t minus 1 minus t plus 1 is negative 2. Thus, the difference of these two vector functions is the vector function with components 2, t squared minus 2, negative 2. For the cross product, the i hat component is t squared minus 1 times t plus 1 minus 1 times t minus 1. The j hat component is the negative of t plus 1 times t plus 1 minus t minus 1 times t minus 1. And the k hat component is t plus 1 times 1 minus t minus 1 times t squared minus 1. And carrying out the computations, we get that the i-hat component is t cubed plus t squared minus 2t, the j-hat component is negative 40, and the k-hat component is negative t cubed plus t squared plus 2t. Now the composition of big F and small f is just the value of big F at e to the t minus 1. So we just plug in e to the t minus 1 to the function big F and obtain e to the t minus 1 plus 1, e to the t minus 1 squared minus 1, e to the t minus 1 minus 1, which after simplifying gives us e to the t, or the vector with components e to the t, e to the 2t minus 2e to the t, and e to the t minus 2. Finally, given the vector function capital F, with components cosine t, sine t, and t. The vector function z with components negative sine t, cosine t, and 1. Let's compute g cross f of phi. Now one way to do this is to compute g cross f of t for any value of t, and then evaluate at phi. But as we saw in the previous example, the computation of the cross product of two vector functions might involve tedious computation. So instead, we'll evaluate g of pi and f of pi first, and then take the cross product. g of pi is negative sine pi, cosine pi 
1 or 0, negative 1, 1. While f of pi is cosine pi, sine pi, pi. Or negative 1, 0, pi. Thus, the i hat component of the cross product is negative pi minus 0. The i hat component is the negative of 0 minus negative 1. And the k hat component is 0 minus 1. Therefore, g cross f of pi has components negative pi, negative 1, negative 1. That's it for this lecture. Again, we defined vector valued functions in this course to be ones that take in real numbers as input and return vectors as output. These functions define curves in two dimensional or even three dimensional space. And we also perform vector operations on these functions. So please try to work on these exercises. Notice that in example number or exercise number three, both equations involve the three variables zx and y. Now, to find the parametrization for this, as a hint, try to eliminate one variable first. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact your lecturer or your discussion class teacher. That's all for this lecture. I hope you have a good day. Goodbye.